Good afternoon. One of the most precious promises I see in the Bible comes from James chapter 1, verse 5. And this says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. This is a precious promise from the Lord. This is a simple and straightforward promise of God's help, one that I learned to employ early on in my Christian life. Because Jesus told us that in this world we will have trouble, but in him we will have peace because he has overcome the world. Later on in the video, I'll talk about types of wisdom that are truly from God, so please stick around for that. Seeking God for wisdom is a deliberate act on our part which involves prayer. We mustn't presume that God is in charge when we are really just working things out by our own best efforts without calling upon him. In Psalm 33, we find that there is no king saved by the multitude of an host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength, and horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. Behold, the eyes of the Lord are is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy. It is not of our own might, brethren, but of his mercy. God is pleased when we depend on him and realize our helplessness without him. He is delighted when we seek him for wisdom, thereby acknowledging our need for him and the desire to please him in all that we do. Proverbs 16.3 also promises that when we commit our works to the Lord, our thoughts shall be established. And this is another promise from God that I've learned to resort to when uh, I'm really in trouble and I can't seem to make up my mind, uh, make up which way God was leading me. Every good gift comes from the Lord, and wisdom is surely a good gift. Let us pray that God will open his hand and satisfy our desire for it. In Proverbs 4, 7, we read that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. The Bible also emphasizes knowledge and declares that God's people are often, de often destroyed because they lack it. Therefore, it is good also to get knowledge to help our understanding in any given situation, and we should seek God boldly to grant us what we need. There are many, however, that have knowledge without wisdom, and this can be as hurtful as lacking knowledge altogether. Knowledge is like the raw material of the clay, and wisdom is the master potter that must shape it. When the Lord gives you knowledge on anything, seek him also for the wisdom to use it, employing the word of God. But when I am being pressed for guidance in a situation and need clarity on God's direction for what to do or where to go, I look toward James 3.17 and apply the Lord's wisdom that is from above to the circumstances I face. This verse lists eight qualities of God's wisdom that we can use to compare with actions we may consider to take. It reads like this, But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. At least for myself, I don't think we can necessarily find a correlation with every one of these qualities, but when I commit it with prayer, some of these elements will usually stand out to me. I also think it's important in regarding the elements of the wisdom from God that it will first show itself to be pure and then peaceable. I think it's vital for the believer that these qualities exist. Each situation you face is likely to be unique, but you should trust the Holy Spirit to lead you in the way he sees fit. I once had a situation in which a certain course of action I considered failed every one of these eight elements. That was unique, but I knew which way not to go. Brethren, we can trust God at his word and consider that this is his oath of promise given to us freely long before we ever knew him. In the time of any tribulation that you're facing, he has sworn to give wisdom to whosoever will ask him for it. So seek him now and find peace through his son, Jesus, who has already overcome the world. And please remember to look in the description for the scriptures I've related in this video. May God bless you.